Are you completely overwhelmed with all the notifications that pop up on your phone throughout the day? Texts and emails and alerts from all sorts of apps that you really don't even care about. Are you ready to do something about it? Stick around, I got you covered. I'm Dylan Stewart, the Mac Whisperer, and in today's video, we're going to learn how to finally tame that notification beast that's just gotten a little out of control. Stick around for my Mac Whisperer power tip because this is going to take everything you learn up to the next level. Let's hop on over to the phone and get started. Notifications are a critical part of the iPhone. They make sure that you don't miss text messages or emails or alerts from apps that are important. But unfortunately, every time you install an app, it asks for permission to notify you and most people just say yes, not thinking about it, which means that every app under the sun is trying to get your attention 24 seven. We're going to walk through some simple steps and I'm going to show you how to take care of it. Our first stop is the settings app. From here, scroll down until you see the notification section right here. Up at the top, we've got three separate options on how notifications show up. The first one shows up as just a count of how many notifications you've got. Let's hop over to the lock screen and see what this one looks like. As you can see down at the bottom of my screen, it shows that I've got one notification. And if I press on that, it's going to show me whatever message came in while I was away from my phone. Here we've got the option called stacking. And the stack option takes all of your notifications, puts them on the lock screen and stacks them with like-minded applications. Let's see what that looks like. Right down here, we can see our time sensitive notifications and by swiping up, we'll see batches of other notifications stacked on top of each other. Coming over to the list option, it's gonna give us a similar view to the stack, but more of the notifications are gonna be just lined up like this. So you can see there's a couple of different ways you can choose to have your notifications show up. For me, I prefer the stack method. Down below that, we've got a few other options to look at. For example, if you've got Apple Intelligence, which is available on the iPhone 15 Pro and later on iOS 18.1 or later, you can summarize your notifications. This gives you the ability to have a stack of notifications like what you see here with a summarization of all of the messages at once. It's really helpful and it saves me a ton of time. In addition to that, we've got this option down here called announce notifications. I can't tell you how often I get asked whether you can have notifications read out to you instead of just having them show up on the screen. And by turning on announce notifications, you can, except it only works when you have AirPods in your ears. But if you use your AirPods all the time, turning this on means that any notifications that pop up will be read to you and you can reply to them without even looking at the notification itself. Now below that, we've got a list of all of the apps on our phone. And here we can see whether an app has notifications on or off. For this game, 2048, that you see at the top, you can see that notifications are currently off. If I go down to Amazon and click on it, you'll see that notifications are turned on. Now before we go deeper into the separate apps that are turned on or off, let's look at some of the options we've got here. First, we can either turn on or off notifications globally that turns them off completely, or this allows us to have more granular control of how the notification works. Right here, we get the option to turn on time sensitive notifications. That means if this app needs to alert me about something that's important and time sensitive, it can pop up on my screen even if I have do not disturb turned on. As I scroll down, you'll see that there are three separate places that notifications can show up. The first one is the lock screen, which is the screen you see when you first take your phone out of your purse or out of your pocket before you've clicked on anything. As you can see, there's a ton of notifications that show up right here. There's several ways you can work with notifications directly off your lock screen. You can either swipe from the right side to the left to clear that notification completely. Or if you've got a stack of notifications, you can tap on the stack for all the notifications to be expanded so you can see them each separately. Clicking show less up at the top will stack them again. You can also come to any notification or stack of notifications and swipe from the right side to the left side. Don't swipe all the way over to where it clears it. Instead, just swipe over a quarter of the way and you'll see this new button that says options. Clicking on that can allow you to mute that specific application for an hour or a day, or turn off that notification altogether. So if you're being inundated by notifications from an app that you don't really care about, you can swipe over here, click options, and just turn it off, and that app will never notify you again. 
In addition to all of those options, if you've got a text message, an email, or a WhatsApp message, you can press and hold on it right in the notification screen and reply to it right here, which means you don't even have to go to the app in order to respond to this notification and have it taken care of. We can also have the notifications show up in our notification center. There's a difference between the lock screen and the notification center. The lock screen is what you see before you've logged into the phone. The notification center is available by dragging down from the upper left hand corner of your screen at any time when you are logged in. A lot of people don't like having their messages show up on the lock screen because they might be private or sensitive. So having them show up in the notification center ensures that that message won't be seen by some random passerby. You can also swipe to clear any messages, partial swipe to change the options, or press and hold in order to respond to that message right from the notification center. The third way that we get notifications is called banners. And banners show up at the top of your screen just like this. After a few moments, that message will disappear. But there's another setting you can use for banners. Down here, you'll see the banner style is set to temporary. But if I change that to persistent, when I get a text message, it'll stay up at the top of the screen until I address it. Now, if you're getting multiple notifications rapidly, the persistent mode doesn't work super well because it only holds onto one at a time. But you'll see that this message is still here waiting for me to respond to. And if I press and hold on it, I can respond right from here without even having to open up the messages app. So lock screen notification and banners are all important for different reasons. The lock screen shows up when your phone is locked. The notification center shows up when you've logged into your phone and banners show up right up at the top of your screen, allowing you easy access to any message that comes in. Down below that, we've got the option of setting sounds for this particular app or turning on badges. Badges are what you see down here on my bottom bar next to the phone app or the text messages app or even up at the top on reminders or emails. Badges let you know how many alerts a specific app has given to you. And in the case of my text messaging app, there's 40 messages waiting for me to respond to them. Let's go on back to the settings app. And there's one more important setting that we need to talk about, and that's this one down here that says show previews. What's a preview? Well, when you get a text message or other message, it shows up up at the top of your screen with the information about that text. It shows not just that I got a text message, but that it's from my wife and that it says she's excited for our date tonight. But when I have previews turned off, when I get a message, it just shows me that I have a message, not what the message actually says. And if I wanna to respond to it, I have to click on that message, taking me away from the app I'm in and over to the iMessage app or the email or whatever app is providing that alert. So you get to choose how and when previews show up for your notifications. If you've set it to never, you're never gonna see any of the details of that notification and you'll have to click on it in order to see what it's talking about. If it's set to when unlocked, it means that you'll only see a preview when you're logged into your phone. But if it's set on always, it means wherever you are, whether your phone is locked or unlocked, whether you're using it or not, that preview text will show up. If you're concerned about privacy, you may wanna leave it set to when unlocked. For me, I want to see the details of the notifications front and center rather than waiting until I click on them or log in. So I leave it set to always. You can change your default by coming into the notifications section at the top here and choosing whether it shows previews always when unlocked or never. That'll set it for any future notifications that you've got and you can go and fine tune specific ones if some of them should be only when unlocked or never. So those are all the different choices and options we have for every app's notification settings. Now let's click the back arrow and take a look at this list. As you look at this list, you're gonna find all sorts of apps that don't really need to notify you all the time. So starting up at the top, ask yourself the question of whether you actually need that app to notify you or not. For example, why do I need the App Store to notify me? That's gonna tell me every time some app's got an update, which is like every six minutes. So I'm gonna just turn that one off. And as I scroll down the Apple Store, I don't need notification from the Apple Store and I can turn that off. As I scroll a little further down, this is my Smart Lock. Now, I do need notifications for this, but I don't really need them in the notification center. So I can turn that off and I can also turn off the sounds and the badges because those don't really matter for this particular app. 
So take a few minutes, go all the way through your notification list and turn off anything that you don't want to have interrupt you. But don't forget, even after the fact, if you get something in your notification section that you no longer want to see, a simple swipe from the right edge and a click on the options button can allow you to mute that app for an hour, for the day, or turn it off altogether. So that notification diet is really going to help out with the notification overload, but there's another conversation we need to have, and it's called focus modes. For years on the iPhone, we had a setting called DND or Do Not Disturb. When you would turn on the Do Not Disturb setting, your phone wouldn't buzz, it wouldn't light up, you wouldn't get notifications, anybody that calls you goes straight to voicemail, and it allows you to be uninterrupted. But Apple changed the Do Not Disturb setting to give it more capabilities. They now call it focus modes. You'll see it in your settings section right here. Clicking on the focus modes, there's several different options. First off, there are pre-configured focus modes that can allow you to customize things for when you're driving or when you're working. You can set up any of these focus modes to allow or decline specific people or specific apps. Let me show you what I mean. Let's click on my work focus here. Here, we get the option for intelligent breakthrough and silencing. This is new as a part of Apple intelligence and can intelligently decide which messages you do or don't need to get at any particular time. Scrolling down a little further, we can click on the people section and we can either choose people that we want to allow notifications from or people that we absolutely don't want to hear from when this focus mode is turned on. To the right of that, we've got the apps section. Clicking here can allow us to silence notifications from specific apps or allow notifications from specific apps. If you spend just a little bit of time customizing these settings, you can make sure that you're never being interrupted by Facebook or Instagram when you're at work, but you are getting your calendar and email notifications. So you get to choose what you want to silence or what you want to allow. Let's click our back arrow here. Scrolling down, we've also got an awesome option to customize your screens. You can click on the far left icon, which is your lock screen, and you can choose specific lock screens that will automatically turn on this focus mode. So when I go to this specific lock screen, it automatically turns my work focus on for me. By clicking on this option here in the middle, you can choose which screens you want to be able to see when you're in that focus mode. For example, maybe you've got a ton of apps, social media, and other apps that you're constantly distracted by and have a tendency to want to click on. By simply choosing whatever pages you do want to see and leaving the other ones unchecked, you can get a much more distraction-free environment easily whenever you're in that focus mode. And if you've got an Apple Watch, you can click on this screen here, which will change your Apple Watch's screen whenever you're in that specific focus mode. Coming down a little bit further, we can turn on Smart Activation, which does its best to learn when to turn on or off this specific focus mode based on time of day or location. If you work in an office, you can set the location and every time you pull in the driveway, it will flip over into this focus mode, making it easier for you to get more work done. You can also add a schedule by clicking down here. Adding a schedule can allow you to either have it turned on at a specific time, at a specific location, or when you open up a specific app. For example, if you'd like to get a little work done in your Notes app uninterrupted, you can click down here and whenever you open up Notes, it will automatically turn on this focus mode, creating more of a distraction-free environment. And at the very bottom, we've got what are called focus filters. And the focus filters can allow you to do even more fine tuning. For example, maybe you want to be alerted about certain calendars during this focus mode, but not others. Clicking on the choose button here, you can pick whichever calendars you want to get alerts from when you're in that focus mode. There are several pre-configured focus modes and some of them have some special tools. For example, the driving mode can turn on automatically whenever you connect to your car's Bluetooth. In addition to that, down here we have the option for an auto reply. This means when you're driving and in that focus mode and someone sends you a text message, they will get a response that says, in this case, Thanks for the message, but I'm in the car. I'll get back to you when I get home. And you can customize this message and also choose whether it gets sent to all of your contacts, just your favorite contacts, the people you've connected with recently, or no one in case you don't want anyone to know when you're in that focus mode. Lastly, we've got two other focus mode options which are really relevant if you have multiple Apple devices, an iPad, an iPhone, a watch, and a computer. 
If you click share across devices, that means when one device gets turned onto a focus mode, it'll turn all the other ones onto a focus mode as well. And if you click the focus status to on, it means that whenever you're in that focus mode, it will alert anyone who's communicating with you that you've got notifications silenced. They can click a button to notify you anyways, or just leave you be until you get back to them. But sometimes the good old fashioned do not disturb is the best one of all, because it's kind of a global kill switch. By turning it on, it means I won't get any messages, I won't get any notifications, I won't be bugged by anyone. But I can come in and I can choose whether specific people can alert me, or I can choose to allow repeated calls. This means if someone calls me from a number I don't recognize and calls back within three minutes, they'll get through the do not disturb, which is really important for emergencies. So you can set up these focus modes in any way that you want, any time you want to, and you, and you can have them triggered at a specific day, time, or location, or even when you turn on a specific lock screen. But you can also manually turn focus modes on and off by swiping down from the upper right-hand corner to get into your control panel. Here you'll see an option for focus modes. If the little moon in the center is white, that means that focus mode is turned on. Tapping on the moon will turn it off or on immediately. Clicking to the right of the circle will open up all your options, allowing you to choose any of your preset focuses with just a single click, just like that. Pretty awesome, right? You've now got some powerful tools that can help you with notifications, but there's one tip that I left out. That's my Mac Whisper power tip, and in just a moment, I'm gonna reveal it. But before I do, if you've already gotten value or learned something amazing from this video, give it a thumbs up. It just makes it easier for other people to find it. And if you've got a question, a comment, something you don't understand, or you just wanna say, hi, Dylan, drop it down in the comments section. I absolutely love to hear from you guys. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, it's time. Hit that subscribe button and that notify bell so that you'll always be alerted whenever I drop new content. I've got a ton of new videos in the pipeline and I'd hate to have you miss any of them. So with that being said, let's get into the power tip. So with all of those tips and tools, you're gonna have a much easier time of managing your notifications, but I've still got one tip left for you. You see, there are some apps that have notifications that I just don't need to see in real time. For example, apps like Amazon or my credit card company may send me notifications that I need to see, but I just don't want to be interrupted by them in the middle of my workday. It's easy to fix that with what's called the scheduled summary. You can click on it right down here inside the notification settings. When you turn on your scheduled summary, you'll get to choose when you want that summary to show up. And you can have the summary show up at multiple points in the day. For me, I have my first one show up at 8 a.m. before I start work, and the last one at 5 p.m. when I'm wrapping things up. This means that all of the notifications from those separate apps can be delivered at 8 and 5 rather than interrupting me all throughout the day. You can add additional ones by clicking the Add Summary button here and change the time to whatever you like. Down below, you'll see a listing of all of the notifications that you get from all of your apps. And there's two ways to look at it. Either the weekly notification average, which shows the apps that give you the most notifications up at the top. This can help you quickly turn things off right from here if they're bothering you and you don't need them. You can also click on the A to Z tab here, which will show all of your applications in alphabetical order, allowing you to quickly turn on or off any one of them. When you set these apps to show up in the summary, the summary will appear at whatever time you've selected and all of those notifications will be right there. Let's take a look. I'm gonna go into my lock screen and there's the notification summary right here showing me all of the messages and notifications that came in throughout the day from some of those apps that just don't need to interrupt me in the middle of my workday. So I hope you learned something amazing and cool in today's video. But remember, there's always something new to learn. Check out this video over here for more amazing tips and tricks on how to use your Apple devices to stay organized and productive. I'm Dylan Stewart, and I will see you in the comments.